So chances are if you own a mechanical watch or have just looked to purchase one, you have been enamored by the movement of the second hand that moves in what appears to be a continuous sweeping motion rather than the tick, tick, tick of a course watch. Now this phenomenon is known as a sweeping second hand and is something many collectors have this just kind of been captured by and just in a trance when they look down. But what exactly is causing this and why do some second hands move quicker than others or smoother than others? In this video, we're gonna uncrack that code and do a few things. So first, we're gonna understand beat rate and just how it works, what is it? Then discuss the advantages and disadvantages of high beat rates versus low beat rates. And then look at six different watches with six different beat rates in slow motion so you can really see those differences. Should be a good one, so let's jump into it. Now, first, in order to understand what is causing the sweeping of a second hand in a mechanical watch, we first need to unpack what is causing the movement in general and to understand what terms like beat rate or beat frequency mean. And I don't wanna go into the greatest detail about how a mechanical watch works, but it is important to understand it a little bit before we proceed here, especially when looking at beat rates. So most mechanical watches on the market operate using a traditional lever escapement, which has been around for hundreds of years, however, Watches will operate with different frequencies or beat rates depending on the speed of the transfer of energy within the movement. Now, how this all starts is from a main power source within a watch, and this is called a mainspring, which will power the entire movement after having been wound either by an oscillating rate or most often referred to as a rotor or with the rotation of the crown in a hand wound watch. Now, as the mainspring, which typically lives inside the safety of a barrel unwinds, the stored energy is released down a sequence of gears called a gear train, eventually arriving at the nexus of where all this magic is going to happen with the escapement wheel and a pallet fork. Now, in other words, the energy being released down this gear train to the escapement wheel will transfer through a locking and unlocking motion with the help of a balance and a hairspring. This locking and unlocking is made possible with what can be best described as a pendulum-like action of a balance wheel and creates a consistent transfer of energy that will allow a mechanical watch to keep time. Now, a couple important points, that action of the escapement wheel teeth interacting with the locking and unlocking of the pallet fork is how the energy is being transferred, but also is the source of that ticking sound that you will hear. But where the beat rates and the frequency come into play is with the balance wheel. Now, simply put, the balance wheel is essentially the heartbeat of a watch. Probably that's the best way to describe it. And how a beat frequency is typically measured is through the movement of this balance wheel over time. Now, the two common ways of classifying this is through beats per hour, vibrations per hour, or through hertz. Now, beats or vibrations per hour will measure the amount of times the balance wheel rotates in one direction per hour, while hertz measures the one complete oscillation or full movement back and forth of the balance per second. So just to offer an example quickly, because I think this might help in kind of articulating this a bit more, if we have a movement that has a balance that moves in one direction six times per second, the balance wheel then in turn would be completing the full back and forth motion three times per second. So with that, we can quickly calculate that this is a three hertz movement. And in the case of vibrations per hour, beats per hour, you would simply multiply the six beats per second times 60, which would give you the beats per minute, and then multiply again by 60 to give you the beats per hour, which would then in this case equal 21,600 vibrations per hour, a very common beat frequency in the world of watches. But why this is noteworthy is because as we transition to the front of the dials and examine the six watches, you'll notice that the beats per second are reflected on the movement of the second hand actually, as it is not actually moving as freely as it appears with the naked eye, but instead will be mirroring the stopping and starting motion as seen on the back with the movement in that oscillation of the balance wheel. But before we take a closer look at the common beat rates in action, I think it's important to understand what are the advantages and disadvantages of higher versus lower beat frequency watches, as it is not as black and white as you might just think on the surface. First, when looking at the benefits of low beat frequency movements, 
In general, low beat frequency watches will have the ability to be less taxing on the escapement, given there will just be less friction taking place per second. Back in the day before modern lubrication and parts that helped in resisting friction came into the fold, low beat frequencies were a great way of managing this battle against friction. This is why there were sometimes issues with frequent servicing of high beat rate movements decades ago. In addition, they also will allow possibilities for longer power reserves, given the energy to move the balance is going to be less compared to a high beat rate movement. This is a tactic used by the Swatch Group quite regularly with their Powermatic movements, taking a 28,800 vibration per hour at a base caliber and then dropping it down to a 3 hertz 21,600 vibration per hour in order to extend that power reserve to 80 hours. Or with a more extreme example with Vacheron's Twin Beat, that they will have two balance wheels, one operating at 5 hertz and the other at 1.2 hertz, with the latter being a standby frequency that will allow the power reserve to be 65 days. And it's very useful in that case because it is a perpetual counter, so you don't have to reset it all the time. Now, when it comes to the benefits of a high beat frequency, apart from the aesthetics of smoother beating seconds hands, a higher beat frequency creates better possibilities for fine tuning regulation. And given the faster oscillations, it will be less susceptible from being thrown off accuracy by more natural motions during wear. Also, higher beat frequencies will allow for more points of measurement. So in the case of a high beat 36,000 vibration per hour movement, since there will be 10 beats per second, it would be possible for a watch to be able to track a tenth of a second. Or in an extreme case, the Zenith D521L Primero with its ultra high beat balance operating at 300 in 60,000 vibrations per hour can track one one hundredth of a second. And just to quickly address it, a quartz watch, given that it is operating using a battery and will use a high oscillating quartz, will not operate in the same way. So I've decided not to include just talking about quartz watches in this video. However, we will look at a couple just notable exceptions, such as the coaxial escapement and the spring drive in this video to further this idea when looking at beat frequencies. But now to look at the different types of beat frequencies, the most popular ones, and we have a few watches that are going to correspond with those different beat frequencies. So let's take a closer look at those. So first, representing the 18,000 vibration per hour or 2.5 hertz, we have a vintage Hamilton actually owned by my grandfather, so really cool piece. Then moving into 21,600 vibration per hour or 3 hertz, we have a classic Hamilton Khaki Field Auto. Then with the 25,200 vibration per hour beat rate or 3.5 hertz, we have an Omega Seamaster Diver 300 meter with the Necton edition, and then moving up to the 4 hertz beat rate, very popular, uh, 28,800 vibrations per hour, we have the Rolex Explorer 2, the 16,570. Then looking at the high beat rate, 36,000 vibration per hour or 5 hertz beat rate with the Zenith Chronomaster Shadow Edition. Love that watch. And then to round us out, we have the Grand Seiko Spring Drive with the SPGA 415. And that is not going to be, of course, a watch that's going to be operating with a traditional escapement, but I think will help in serving and furthering the idea in explanation of beat rate. And just as an important note, two of the watches that we're going to be looking at here today are available on teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry, including Hamilton at that more affordable end, Hamilton Khaki Field Auto, probably one of the best entry level watches that you're going to find from a Swiss brand, pretty much can do everything, 100 meters of water resistance, uh, it's got you covered pretty much anywhere that you go. And then you have the Zenith Chronomaster Shadow, which is personally one of my favorite watches that we have available on our store. Absolutely love this thing. You're getting, of course, the El Premier movement inside here, the 4061, and that A384 case, which I just love the dimensions on this thing. The proportions are amazing. Uh, titanium case, very lightweight, 37 millimeter in diameter, but 47 millimeter in its lug to lug distance. It wears incredibly well, and it basically just looks like the uh, Batmobile on your wrist. Love the dark, just kind of mysterious undertones that this one has. If you like this content, want to have it keep coming to you, and how it's all made possible is through our store, teddybaldestar.com, so definitely go check it out. So starting by taking a look at the 18,000 vibration per hour or 2.5 hertz here with the vintage Hamilton. So 18,000 vibrations per hour is a rate seldom seen in the modern watch market, but commonly seen in vintage pieces and therefore definitely one to know. Given its lower beat frequency, this was a classic use case in pocket watches and older movements. And given that it is 2.5 hertz, it will have the least amount of beats of any of the movements that we're gonna be looking at here today. And when slowing down the footage here with that slow-mo, it should be the easiest to track each beat compared to the other ones that we're gonna be looking at, as the steps are gonna be more prominent as it gets to that next marker. 
Then contrasting that with the next watch that we're gonna be looking at, another Hamilton, a modern one at that, with the Hamilton Khaki Field Auto, we have another relatively slow beat rate, but one that is widely used, 21,600 vibrations per hour or three hertz. Now this beat rate, again, is just used in the industry quite a bit by Seiko with their 4R and 6R movements, Orient's in-house calibers, Swatch Group with their Powermatic 80 style calibers, Miyota with their 8000 series, and even many high-end calibers from high horology brands are going to be using this beat rate. Now this beat frequency will take away with six beats per second of that second hand, adding one additional beat from the previously mentioned 18,000 vibration per hour movement. But that added beat does make a noticeable difference in terms of the cleanness of that sweeping second hand. So now moving to a bit of an oddball beat frequency with the 25,200 vibrations per hour or 3.5 hertz beat rate. Now there are certainly outliers to the traditional lever escapement system. And one of the most well-known alternatives is with the coaxial escapement developed by English watchmaker, Dr. George Daniels in the 1970s, patented in the 1980s. And though the invention didn't find widespread use until it was commercialized, by Omega in 1999, it is truly a huge feat when it comes to watchmaking. For the sake of not adding time to this already long video, the primary difference here with the coaxial uh, escapement in regards to uh, beat rate is that it uses a system of three pallets as opposed to two in order to reduce sliding friction by way of minimizing distance traveled of the pallets and separating the locking and impulse function of those pallets. So this in the long term is gonna lead to reduced need for lubrication and maximizing the service interval. Now, Given this heavily modified escapement, there was quite a bit of testing in order to identify the optimal beat rate until 25,200 vibrations per hour was adopted. Now this beat frequency, although not completely exclusive to the coaxial, is probably best seen from the mass market as being the best example of its execution, beating away with seven beats per second. And of that second hand, it still does really look from the naked eye, almost operating to that of a more normal four hertz beat rate of 28,800 vibrations per hour. But now looking at that beat rate, it's probably the most popular one on the market. It's so 28,800 vibrations per hour or four hertz. This beat rate translates to eight beats per second. And in the wild, you're gonna be seeing this in the likes of Rolex in-house calibers, as well as essentially every Swiss third-party movement in circulation, like the very mighty Eta calibers, Valju chronographs, and the many alternatives from the likes of Salida, as well as even Miyota with their 9000 series. Now with a powerful blend of accuracy, ease of regulation and power reserve, and most importantly, a very smooth visual sweep to the second hand, this is probably the rate in which you're going to come into contact most as a watch enthusiast. But now getting into the world of high beat movements with the 36,000 vibration per hour or five hertz movement. Now the trailblazers of this high beat movement really are probably best associated with the likes of Grand Seiko and of course Zenith as the beat frequency of the El Primero since its conception in 1969. Now in practice, 36,000 vibrations per hour is immensely smooth, just sweep to behold, featuring 10 beats per second and will lead to increased possibilities for timing events as mentioned, and is especially useful frequency for looking at that of a chronograph, being able to time different events. And when slowing down that second hand, you really start to see the progression and a big step up in terms of how just clean that sweep is. However, one of the most notable current sweeps that is on any second hand has to be with the Grand Seiko Spring Drive. Now, I do not wanna get into all the details about how a spring drive works because I went into crazy detail explaining it in another video, which I can link to in the description down below. Now, the spring drive is a completely different technology and does not contain a traditional lever escapement, but a thing called a tri-synchro regulator. Now, simply put, instead of oscillating of a balance, the spring drive features a thing called a glide wheel that's gonna rotate in one direction eight times per second. But in order to control that speed of eight revolutions per second, a small integrated circuit that receives a frequency from the quartz oscillating will then send a small burst of electromagnetic energy with the help of closely located copper material to that glide wheel. And that's gonna act as a frictionless brake. So no locking and unlocking. So it's all through electromagnetic energy. Now this is why when examining the second hand of a Grand Seiko, there are not the same noticeable beats per second and since there is only one rotation constantly in one direction, this fluid motion will be shared with the second hand as well. Now, it's probably not fair to include the spring drive in a video like this because it's a completely different process to the traditional Swiss lever escapement, but I think it serves as a great distinction to draw and offers a better understanding of just kind of how the operation of a caliber can affect the movement of that second hand on the front of the watch. But in summary, are beat rates important? 
Yes and no, I think you now know the advantages and disadvantages, but hopefully with this video, you now can just better understand a little bit more about the intrinsic movement of that second hand of your mechanical watch. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, maybe you learned something, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon, really would appreciate that. That does help out the channel and a great indication that you guys like this style of content as we kind of proceed here. In addition, definitely head over to teddybaldestar.com, great variety of different watches available for sale, full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry, including that Zenith Shadow Revival, uh, love that watch, and then also the Hamilton Khaki Field Auto, two very different watches for two very different types of people, but two great ones in the respected price categories in which they represent. Also, if you wanna stay up to date with content, be sure to follow the review channel that we have where we're covering some additional watches every single week there. And then also, of course, follow us on Instagram, great way to stay up to date with the content, also see some cool photos, and a great way to interact with myself on a more personal level on the day-to-day. -day. But guys, thank you again so much for watching, be well, and I will see you all very soon.